All right. Don't you hate waiting? <laughs> you were like, this is so awkward. Does this guy not know our kids are here? Like, hurry it up, man. It's Christmas Eve. We got stuff to do, food to eat, presents to wrap. Obviously, nothing to buy. You guys are all ahead of me. That's great. We just don't like to wait as a culture, do we? We just don't get excited about that. And in fact, we do everything in our power to create a, a world where now is the norm and the not yet is absolutely, we just try to not do that whenever possible, right? We try to avoid it at all costs. I mean, think about it. Like, I was just driving around today a little bit. People are crazy, and it was none of you, I'm sure, but we want to get there now. That's why we're on the interstate. We weave in and out of traffic, right? Because we don't want to wait another second. We want to be there now, right? Or maybe you heard about the guy that he got so tired of waiting, he was in a really nice restaurant. It's actually a video on YouTube, two million hits. You can check it out, not now, but later. And so he, he went in and he was sitting there waiting, waiting, food wasn't coming. He got so fed up, he ordered a pizza. He called and had the pizza delivered in the restaurant. The place erupted and you're like, can I do that during Christmas Eve? What are the rules on that, right? Like, and it was just like, he got tired of waiting. He ordered food and there it was. We don't like to wait. And one of the best places to, to wait, it even has a room called waiting the doctor's office right that's fun sitting there waiting 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 is it time to see the doctor not yet and who do you never see in the waiting room the doctor right you never see like wouldn't it be nice and let me know maybe your doctor does this i'm new to the area i haven't found you know someone i'm completely in love with yet and so imagine this you walk in and the receptionist says i'm so sorry why don't you go and have lunch Finish your errands, do some emails, and you know what? When you come back, the doctor will be waiting for you. Wouldn't that be great? Has that happened to anybody? Not yet, right? We hope so. Maybe we'll start a new trend. We don't like to wait because it reminds us that we're not in control. And the place we want to get to, the thing or the person we want to see, the obstacle that's in our way, we really don't have a control over helping us get to the now. Now, there have been a lot of... Uh, Length. People have gone to great lengths to reduce the amount of time you wait. One of the best examples is Disney, right? When you go to one of the Disney theme parks, they have gone to extraordinary length just to not make it, you know, uh, your wait time, to reduce that as much as possible. Now, what they do is that one of the best things they've come up with is something called the Fast Pass. Anybody use the Fast Pass? A couple people. Fast Pass is really interesting. It's called Fast Pass, but it's not that fast. It's, well, you, you have to, like, you call ahead, and then you have a separate line. So it is shorter, but then you still wait in line, right? Like it's still, so it's a little bit better. And so it's helpful versus the other line over there is really, really long and it's hours and hours of waiting. But the fast pass still is waiting. But then once you get in line, right, it's a little bit better because then there's, what do they have? They have those little signs, right? And they say, from this point, you have, you know, two days to ride, you know, whatever the ride is. And then you, you move the next sign. And we like that because it's still frustrating, but at least it lets you know that you're moving, right? You know you're making progress. And that's kind of helpful. And it'd be great, though, if there was signs like that in other areas of our life where we have to wait, right? Like maybe even waiting for that, that new job or, or just a job. And you've been waiting, waiting, and you're so sick and tired, and you, 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 you've just, oh, you're frustrated. But what if there was a sign? All of a sudden, you open a present up this Christmas, and it says, hey, from Christmas right now, four months ahead, you get the job. That would be a long time, but you, you could handle it, right? Because you would know, okay, four months, I could do it. Or what about, about one of your children, or maybe your grandchildren, or, or a child you know, you just kind of, when are they going to grow up? When are they going to grow out of this phase? They're driving me crazy. I love them in Jesus' name, but they're driving me nuts, right? Like, or maybe it's an older, an older teenager or even a college student, and you're just like, when are the lights going to come on? When are they going to get to that next stage? And if there was a sign that just said, from this point, you know, year and a half, year and a half, they're going to get it. 
Lights are going to come on. They're going to, you know, stop, you know, chewing on your shoes. And they're going to, you know, get a job. They're going to move out of your basement. Like, whatever it was, you could handle that. Because you know you're making progress. Or what about, what about a spouse, maybe? Maybe you're waiting for a spouse to, to make those changes. They keep saying, I'm going to make those changes. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up on time. I'm going to actually stick to the budget that we said we're going to agree to. And then what if in six months you knew? Okay, they're going to do it. That would be great, right? Because we know at least it's going to happen. And then we could handle it. We could process it. The problem is we don't know, right? And that makes waiting really, really difficult. Particularly when the waiting is obviously of a lot more severe nature. Waiting's not fun. And so the danger of us who are now people, we got to have it now, we don't want to wait for anything, is that when we're waiting for that, in that not yet period, we're tempted to take things into our own hands. We're tempted to give up. We're tempted to, get, to be exhausted and apathetic and, and stop trusting people and maybe even stop believing and trusting God that he, even, he cares about our circumstance, our situation, or what's really going on. He's, God, are you out there? You're so disconnected. How come nothing's happening? Waiting, waiting, waiting. And Christmas, obviously, I think, has a lot to do with waiting. Every day, my kids ask me, is it Christmas yet? Not yet. Cut up my presents yet? Not yet. Is it time to... No, not yet. <laughs> Waiting, waiting, waiting. That first Christmas had a lot to do with waiting. And we've been kind of looking through the Christmas story through the lens of the Christmas carol, O Holy Night. And one of the lines says, Long lay the world in sin and error pining. The world had been waiting, waiting, over 400 years, around 400 years, until the Messiah, until Jesus showed up, until he appeared. And so I want to look at two individuals tonight who, had, who really can tell us a lot about Waiting. They have some important things to teach us. I want to look at Simeon and Anna in Luke chapter 2. You probably haven't heard a lot about them, especially at Christmas time. They're kind of, uh, kind of behind the scenes players of the Christmas story, but they're very significant. Luke chapter 2, 36 and 38 says this, tells us first about Anna. And Anna was this, this prophet, this, this person that, that spoke about injustice in the world. And Luke tells us that she's 84 years old. And when she finally meets Jesus, so her whole life she's been waiting for this Messiah. And I imagine her life has been filled with a lot of ups and a lot of downs, just like you and me. And she's seen lots of injustice, lots of things that have frustrated her and broken her heart. You have to be reminded that Rome, it ruled the day. And so, and they kept Israel under their thumb. They taxed him heavily, so much to the point where they, they taxed him right into poverty. And she longed for the Messiah to come. She longed for the Messiah to come to make everything right to right all the wrongs. And so she waits for days, for months, for years. She fasts, she prays, she waits and waits. And finally one day, baby Jesus is here. And Luke says, here's what she says. Coming up to them at that very moment, to Mary and Joseph and Jesus, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She's waiting this whole moment for her, in her whole life for the Messiah to come and to, to redeem this lost and broken world. At the same time, it's a little bit earlier in this chapter, Luke, the author of this gospel, he tells us about another man, another person, rather, a man named Simeon. Now, Simeon is a man, he's full of the Holy Spirit, very just in touch with God in tune. And it says that God had revealed to him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And so he's been waiting and waiting. He describes him this particular waiting. He's been waiting for the consolation of Israel. And what does that mean? He's quoting the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, and he's talking particularly about consolation refers to, in this this context, for someone who who is comforting you during a time of suffering. He's been waiting and waiting. Waiting for the comfort of the Messiah to to make, again, to make everything right, to repair broken homes so there's no more broken families and to, to fix all the violence and the deceit and the greed and all these things that are going on in his world, just like our world today. Simeon's been waiting. Anna has been waiting. They've been living in this world of not yet. Then in verse 27, it says this, Mary and Joseph, they, what, they, what do they do? They bring Jesus. It's the appointed time as their custom was, and they dedicate Jesus. Now, 
Simeon takes the takes little baby Jesus there, and I kind of picture, if you've seen Lion King before, I hope you have, they take, remember he takes Simba, and he kind of holds him up like that? I picture it's kind of what he does with Jesus. That's totally just my guess, but he, I think he holds him up, and then he says this. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. If you translate that literally in Greek, the very first word is now. Meaning, Now the wait is over. No more waiting. No more not yet. Not yet has turned into now. And now nothing instantaneously changes in their physical world. Rome is still in charge. There's still injustice. There's still lots of things going wrong. But the one thing different is now there is this baby. Baby Jesus has entered the world. And the not yet has now become now. His appearing brings new hope. It brings special, uh, special insight. And the not yet, this waiting after year after year, not yet, not yet. Is the Messiah coming? Not yet. Finally becomes now. Now, like we talked about, Christmas is just full of these, these kind of moments, right? Uh, the other day I had experienced, I experienced one last night looking at a house of uh, lights, hours on end waiting to see this house, but we waited another time a few days ago waiting, waiting to see Santa's Little Wonderland. We got to the store, we thought early, and immediately we pull up and we say, oh, can we go see Santa? And they said, not yet. Do you have a ticket? And we said, not yet. <laughs> so we got a ticket and the ticket just said, now you, have, you get this ticket so you can come back at 2. We got there at 10. We got, and they come back at two so you can wait in line to hopefully get the picture and do the whole thing. And wow, okay, this is not fun yet. And so we went and we did, you know, best of our ability. We, we had lunch and we played games. We walked around the store. We tried to kill time. It was finally our turn. I'm standing in line. I said, you know, trying to be a good dad. I was like, okay, you guys keep going and, and playing and, and I'll, I'll stand in line. And so we're waiting and we're waiting and the kids keep asking, is it time? Not yet. Is it time? Not yet. And they're playing. Finally, the line starts to move. I haven't moved in like hours. And I finally am inching forward, inching forward. And I'm kind of looking around the store, trying to make, you know, give the, the husband-wife contact, eye contact thing where you can just like mental telepathy, look for your spouse, and they know, and they kind of come back to you. Mine was not working. And so finally I call, I get my cell phone. And uh, just so you know, my wife's not in this service, but I'll do the same story next service. If I ever have a heart attack, I won't call my wife because she never answers the phone. And, and so I call, I call again, I text her, I'm looking and I'm hoping and we're getting closer and closer. Now we're just two spots away from it being our turn. We've waited all this time. I'm starting to sweat. I'm like, do I let people in front of me? What's I'm like, this is just a silly Santa workshop. Why am I getting all like worked up about this? You know. And finally, they come back. And I said, the wait is over. It's our turn. It's, it's our turn. It's time. Let's go. And you know, we had this, we rush and we rush and we finally get the picture and whew, memory made. Done. <laughs> the not yet became now. And when I was, all that happened, it kind of just got me thinking about this, this story where not yet becomes now, all of a sudden. You never know how fast or when that's going to happen. And the way that we actually wait, I think, helps us when the now gets here, prepares us for when the now arrives. And so maybe you've been waiting a long time. God has an answer to prayer, or you haven't gotten that job, or that relationship isn't working out the way you wanted. And you've heard a lot of not yet's. But that first Christmas, that, that oh holy night, that changed everything. So Jesus' presence turns our not yet into now. So when Jesus comes into your life, when you invite him in, he comes right into the middle of your circumstances, to your, your situation, to the pain, into a divorce, into a, a, a career, into a cancer, to, into whatever it is. He comes right in the middle and he says somehow he, his presence goes, takes things from not yet and they become now. Because now God is here. Now you're not alone. Now you have hope. Now we can go on. We can make it. His presence turns our not yet into now. I want to show you a short video as we, we wrap up here in a moment of a friend of ours here at Community. She's one of our tenders at our Lincoln Park campus, uh, in Lincoln Square rather. Her name is Marguerite. I want you to hear her story of waiting. Hi, my name is Margarita Gray. My son is Brandon Gray. He is 12 years old. We both attend community, and I've been coming to community for a year and a half. 
I'm originally from Guatemala City. I was born and raised there. My parents um, divorced, so then me and my mother moved to the United States. After that, you know, I went to high school. After high school, you meet that person that you want to spend the rest of your life. So I got married. I had a son, Brandon, and after that, you know, things didn't work. It was a very unhealthy relationship. We got divorced and um, it, I became a single mom. Wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I was, I was a total mess. Decided to go to the doctor. And one of those times that I went, they found a lump in, in my chest. Once I got the results from the mammogram, I had cancer and it was very, from the shape of it, it was very aggressive. So I lost it for a couple of minutes. You know, you start seeing you, what is gonna happen with Brandon? What's gonna happen with my mom? I said, I'm so sorry, God. You remember in those moments that you, you need him. And that um, you're not superwoman. He's always been with me. I know that. Whatever I do, he's going to make it better. Here is where Nikki and Tony come in. They live right next next door to me. Nikki uh, took me to take my chemo. She was always there for me. After I got well, Nikki goes up to me. So, are you gonna go check out the church? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything. Let's go check it out. I love the music, it's just like it it's something really, really nice. I can't, I can't explain it. Jesse starts talking and he was talking to me. And I said, this is my church. You know, I like it. And Brandon loves it too. Brandon loves, he started at Kid City. And then from Kid City, he went to Stucco. I brought two new people. All three of us serve at Kid City. Now that I have been going to church, I feel like I am not alone. I feel like my prayers have been answered. It's like I'm not looking anymore for something to fill my... In here, I feel like I'm... My heart is full. It's everything that I've been looking for. What I want to do is get baptized. For sure, I do. God's presence turns our not yet into now. And I, I'm sure there's a variety of reasons uh, why you're here tonight. But I would say that for me, I think the thing that probably draws them all together, that brings them together, I think God has brought you here on purpose. The scriptures tell us that, that the Father draws everyone to himself. And I think God is drawing you here because he wants you to know that now there is hope. Now the wait is over. You know, as we look at this famous Christmas carol throughout this series, the O Holy Night Christmas song, it's, it's really a song about hope. When you think about a lot of the great just church songs throughout history, they're about hope, amazing grace, and it is well with my soul. They, they're written out of these, these very tragic and this, this deep, hurting places, yet these, these authors that can say, these writers can say, I have a deep, abiding hope and trust in Jesus. And this Christmas carol, O Holy Night, is, is no different. Look at these lyrics with me as we close. It says, O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. 
It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world, or the waiting world, rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. You're here tonight, not by accident, but by God's perfect design. And we want you to know that now there is hope available. All you have to do is invite Jesus in or invite him in to, to refresh your perspective, your waiting into your situation, into your life, and he will. And our hope and our prayer tonight is that your heart would be filled with this thrill of hope that Jesus offers you and me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this O Holy Night, that very first Christmas that changed everything, God. God, we pray tonight that we would be reminded of that, that great hope that we have in you. God, and as we wait in eager anticipation, God, in that not yet, God, we thank you that your presence turns our not yet into now. So God, as we wait on you, wait for you, wait with you, we invite you in. Speak to us clearly. We remind us of what Christmas is really all about. Amen.